let's let's talk about maybe the most incredible entrance to a song of all time. Mm. Funky, fresh, dressed to impress, ready, ready to, to party. party. Money in your pocket. Yeah. Dying, Dying to move your body. body. To get right. inside, you pay the whole $10. Scotch tape yeah. with a razor blade taped to your collar. Uh -huh. Leave the guns and the crack and the knives alone. MC Light, Light is on the microphone. microphone. Yo, you, I mean, on a song with everybody in the world, you Ooh. had the moment that every, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. can you take us through that process and clear up the, yeah. the thoughts that exist about that verse and the writing of it, et cetera? Absolutely. Um, so we're all in the studio. Uh, KRS One. I think there's a photo where you can see KRS One, LL, D Nice, and it's one other. It might be Kumo. No, no, we wouldn't have Kumo D or LL. LL. No, I was about to say that didn't. And happen. by the way, why was LL there? He didn't even get on the song. So weird. You know what? They wanted him to get on the song really, really badly, and I don't know if it was a decision of his or his record label. But mind you, these are the days where record labels aren't too keen on you rapping on other people's records mm -hmm. on other labels. By the way, it's still like that. It's still like that. It's, it, there's, there's yeah, there's so many collaborations. Worse like, then, though. It was, it, it was worse then, but it still happens now where these two labels uh, ain't getting along or they only want to feature artists that are. It still happens. But go ahead on. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So, so in any case, I'm there. I'm writing. You know, I'm getting really analytical with what it is that I'm writing. And, you know, I say it and they go, and I had the same experience with um, with Puffy, with Cold Rocker Party, where I was writing, he was like, you're making too much sense. Like, make it, you know, just you, every thought doesn't have to correlate with the next, like, just free, you know, free it up a little bit. And so inside the studio with, um, with Self Destruction, you know, already LL was brewing. I'm sure if he got on the record, a lot of what I said, he would have said. So we worked together to get the freshest lines and, you know, have it be hot and current, but not necessarily as analytical as I was making it. And so mm -hmm. it was so crazy because at one point I asked, um, I think I finally saw the splits on it and I didn't have any uh, publishing or writers on the song. And oh, I wow. know that I contributed, but when I looked at LL, he had 2%. That's how many people was on this, mm. on this song. Right. And so, you know, uh, I called up my folks and I was just like, you know what? I'm, I'm not even understanding. How does this play out? Cram to understand. They said, well, this is, <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> this is the way that it was written. Um, nobody complained then. So if you want to go to LL and ask him for some of the 2%, you're, you know, you can do that. I'm like, fuck that. I don't need no, you're like 1% <laughs> of a damn song. Like that's crazy. But we did work in tandem and the only there's only two times that I have not written a song. Yeah. And I'm so glad that I got past not liking it in order to do it. Mm. Because to me, cha 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 it's crazy. to the party gras, th that ain't MC Light. That right. wasn't MC Light at that time. I, I was I was hot damn ho, here we go again. Yeah. I, you know, I was coming from Brooklyn and cha 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 was a little more playful than I was accustomed to. So I'm glad that I got out of my own way and did it. It was number one on the Billboard charts and one of the most popular songs. When I perform, people know all the words to Cha 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 and big up to King of Chill for doing that, which is why I understand when a record label will drop an artist for not you know, going with the flow of what a hit record is. Mm. Sometimes as an artist, you, you don't tune in you're, you're too busy hearing your own voice and what it is that you like, and you can't hear a hit necessarily. Mm -hmm. So big up to King of Chill. Um, and then the other one, I wanted King of Chill to write because it was to a Foster McElroy song called Dr. Soul, and I didn't get it. I was like, I don't even know what to write to this. And I actually said no the first time. 
And then, you know, the, these are the guys that produced in Vogue. So this was maybe eight months before in Vogue came out. Mm. They're actually in the video and they're singing in the video. Mm. But the video was about the producers, Foster McElroy. And so I said, Casey, if you can, if you can write that rhyme, I'll do it. If not, like, I'm going to have to let it go. So, you know, sometimes for, for the sake of the song and participating, I have allowed someone to, to come. Well, in. I think that's glossed over in the, in the music making and recording of, of things that are going to entertain the people. Mm. Right. A lot, a lot of times artists are so, like you said, they're caught up in their own echo chamber. Uh, they're, they're bent, hell bent on just being what they are and not really focusing on maybe what's good for the party goer, the consumer, the, the person commuting in their car, going to and from work and what those people are vibing to, to be a part of their lives in that kind of way. Sometimes mm -hmm. artists are so stuck on bringing people into their own world, as you just articulated, right. that they don't right. go out into other people's world and see what ways that they can, uh, you know, touch people and, and affect people in their world and sonically, musically, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, 